Hey guys, Key here from Kegland, and today we're talking about a new little feature which we've included in some of the new firmware releases of our wrapped pill and also the new firmware release on the wrapped fermentation chamber and we're talking about how they're now working together. So previously, uh, you know, what we've had is the wrapped pill which primarily most people have connected to the wrapped portal uh, via a Wi-Fi connection. So whereby they get the pill and basically this talks to your home internet router directly. So, uh, you know, that's fantastic. However, we've got in the latest firmware a Bluetooth function whereby instead of the pill connecting using, you know, Wi-Fi directly, it's now giving off a low energy Bluetooth beacon. So if you're giving off a low energy Bluetooth beacon, the benefit with that is the huge power saving. So the battery will last five times longer. The other benefit that you'll also get is in some instances, some people had bad Wi-Fi reception, for instance, and typically a lot of people were getting the pill and dropping it inside a fermenter, sometimes a stainless steel fermenter, and sometimes that fermenter was sitting inside, you know, a, a, a fermentation chamber like this one, and that made it harder for the signal to get out. But with a lot of our wrapped internet connected devices, such as our, um, you know, our wrapped fermentation chamber, for instance, that is able to pick up on a Bluetooth beacon and relay that to the internet. So potentially because the electronics of, for instance, this controller are sitting at the top of the fridge on the outside of the, you know, fridge cavity, this is able to get, you know, a Wi-Fi signal, much more, a uh, much stronger Wi-Fi signal than obviously a pill sitting inside a liquid inside a chamber like that with the door closed most of the time. So, you know, it's a really handy feature. It's just another thing that we're doing to try to integrate all the products to, together to make them work, uh, you know, really seamlessly. And I'm just gonna show you how that works now. Now, the other benefit of doing this as well is you can use the pill uh, temperature sensor. So the pill has a temperature sensor on board and a lot of you guys who have already bought a pill hydrometer and then are checking that on the uh, wrapped portal would see that the temperature is on a graph like that. And often if you've got a fermentation chamber like this, you'll see the temperature is different. And sometimes it's off by like as much as say two or three degrees. Or if you're using like a really aggressive yeast, like a, you know, like a quick yeast or something like that, that sometimes can crank into fermentation so fast that it gets so much hotter than what you may ideally want it to be and the outside fridge doesn't cool it fast enough. So um, I'm gonna to explain to you another feature whereby instead of a fermentation chamber, just using the temperature probe on the side here to cool the fermenter down or heat it up uh, or whatever it is you wanna do, it actually is using the core temperature taken off the pill inside the fermenter. Anyway, I'll show you how this all works and let's get stuck into it. So with the pill, the first thing you have to do is make sure it's giving off the Bluetooth beacon. The pill by default when you first purchase it will be working in Wi-Fi mode, meaning it's gonna to wanna to connect to your Wi-Fi router directly. However, if you've already set up a pill, you'll already know how to get into the access point mode. So where you plug the power uh, cable in here, the USB type C power cable, that will basically force it to turn on its own access point and most people will connect to that access point with their mobile phone and then go into the settings and then turn off the blue, the, the Wi-Fi and then turn on the Bluetooth to use this feature. So that's the first thing you're gonna have to do and obviously you wanna remember to do that before you drop it into your fermenter because obviously once it's already sitting in the fermenter and you mid-ferment, it's, you know, there's no way to force it to go into the access point mode. So you have to do it before you throw it in. So that's the first thing. Now, because some of you guys are gonna be using the pill with a wrapped temperature controller rather than one of our fermentation chambers, I thought I'd show you on the temp controller how it's done. On the fermentation chamber, I've actually already uh, bonded the two devices. So you can see actually now on the display, I've got 22 degrees Celsius, which is actually the wrapped pill uh, temperature and also the SG so that's the gravity of 1005 for so pretty much this beer is already completed in there and the gravity's got right down there but also on the display it gives me the built-in probe temperature so as you can see they're about four degrees apart approximately between the wrapped pill temperature and also the built-in temperature um, on the temperature probe built into the actual wrap fermentation chamber. Anyway, yeah, with the temp controller, a lot of you guys might use this type of temp controller to control, let's say, a heating device and maybe a glycol chiller if you've got glycol, you know, a jack and tank or something like that. And in this instance, I'll just show you how to also pair the pill. So you just go into the settings here. The first thing you have to do is actually turn on the Bluetooth setting. So you go in here and then you scroll up to Bluetooth and then do that. 
Yeah, so Bluetooth enabled. I've already enabled mine in here. Then go back. The other thing you're gonna have to do is go into the Bluetooth devices and then essentially we call it bonding the device. So I've got uh, bonded devices and there's nothing there and now all the unbonded device. Now in our office, we have got a heap of these different Bluetooth, device, Bluetooth devices, which is why um, I've got so many in this long list. But I'm gonna scroll through this one and find this particular one here. That's the one there, so I'm gonna bond that one. So you press enter again to bond it and you'll see now under bonded devices, I've got the pill at the top there. Now, if I do that, this the pill is essentially bonded with this temp controller, but I also want to get this temp controller to, instead of using this temperature probe, I wanted to use the, uh, the pill temperature as well. So I'm gonna go back in the settings menu again. I'm also gonna change that, so settings, um, and then go to the top of the menu here in the settings, and you'll see it says temperature sensor. It's currently on built-in. So this is the built-in probe here like this. Um, and what I wanna do is hit enter, and then change that to the pill as well. So I scroll down, and there we go. I've got the wrap pill, and then select that one. And there we go. So now I'll go back to the display. And of course, it's actually showing exactly the same as this display because, you know, naturally it's the same pill that I've bonded with. So you can actually have a pill bonded with multiple different devices as well. So, you know, potentially you might even want to get a temp controller and just use it as a heads up display. You could hang this, uh, you know, on a different wall of your garage or something like that. Maybe if you've got, for instance, the fermentation chamber a little bit further away and you can't see it conveniently or it's behind something or in a cupboard or whatever. Uh, you can actually use a temp controller as a heads up to display showing you what the gravity is too. Okay, so now I'm taking this core temperature reading inside the fermenter here from the pill and essentially that Bluetooth data is going up into the controller. So I'm basically turning on and off the heating and cooling device on the chamber based on that core reading, which is exactly what I want. However, I've still got a second probe here and you know, the the, the smart way to deal with this is actually to use a combination of both of these temperature sensors to get us the optimum result. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, firstly, I have a, a level of redundancy. So for instance, let's say I have uh, lose connection or I lose battery power uh, on the pill, which is unusual because the pill now lasts more than six months battery on Wi-Fi and you know, much longer than that on Bluetooth. So the chance of running out of battery is firstly pretty slim, but you know, let's say for, for any reason I've lost uh, you know, that Bluetooth data, it'll default back to this probe on the side. So it's still a good idea to have this probe here you know, plugged in. And if you're using, for instance, the wrap temperature control box, it's a good idea to you know, get that probe and tape it to the side of the fermenter. So you're at least getting some type of reading off there. Um, with that said, um, you know, there's another setting that we've put into the uh, menu, which is called, uh, you know, allowed sensor differential. So this is essentially, so not only we want to take this data and this data, but we want to make sure that the two temperatures, you know, aren't deviating excessively, you know, away from each other. Otherwise, it'll default back to this probe on the side wall. And if you go into the setting menu, you'll be able to see this setting in here, which says allowed sensor differential. So let me show you uh, what that setting does and how it works and how you can basically use that to really optimize the results. So let's say we're using the fermentation chamber and we just set the temperature to 24 degrees Celsius. So what we're doing is a diacetyl rest here. So we were fermenting at 18 degrees here and I literally have just got the temperature jump up to 24 degrees Celsius. What you will get in that instance is basically, you know, the air free air temperature inside the uh, fermentation chamber will jump up from 18 to, you know, 24 pretty quickly, usually within an hour or so, because there's not a lot of thermal mass in the air in the, uh, in the fermentation chamber. So you'll see it'll heat up really fast like that. And then depending on what your hysteresis is set to, the temperature will bounce around, you know, 0.5 degree, you know, temperature hysteresis in this instance. So it'll go 0.5 degrees higher and below that 24 degree set point. So it's gonna jump up to, you know, 24 and a half, 23 and a half, and just go like that. And you know, the air temperature in the fridge will essentially be sitting, you know, on average, pretty much bang on like 24 degrees. So if you've got the actual wort temperature though, you'll see the pill sitting in the wort, that's not gonna jump up, you know, instantly like that. So you'll find that what'll happen is the, the wort temperature will gradually build up like this, 
and gradually start to approach you know, the 24 degrees Celsius. And as it gets closer and closer, it never quite gets there. It, it basically approaches what's called an asymptote and never quite reaches 24, but eventually it's close enough. Now, for a lot of guys in home brewing or, or even in professional brewing, that is probably you know, a, an acceptable result. And most people are pretty happy with that, I guess. But the benefit of using the, uh, the, the temperature reading from the pill is really we get a much better result. So let me show you the difference. As you can see here, we've got 24 hours, typically something like that. And you know, you'll get the temperature of that wort inside the core reading of the fermenter will get you know, pretty close to the target temperature. But let's say, for instance, um, you know, we start using the pill temperature probe. What you'll notice is the temperature will heat up really fast and actually the air temperature will kind of overshoot inside that fermentation cavity. So the degree at, we, at, at which it overshoots is based on you know, that, uh, that setting that we were talking about before, which is the allowed sensor differential. So that's this setting in here. So that's set at five degrees by default. And you can see here um, that five degrees showing this arrow here, that's essentially that five degrees allowing that uh, temperature uh, of the airspace to increase five degrees above the set point. So if we're set at 24 degrees, for instance, it means that the air temperature inside the uh, fermentation cavity will go sh shoot up straight to 29, so overshoot by essentially um, you know, five degrees. And then you know, the temperature hysteresis settings will kick in and then it will jump up and down between, you know, let's say half a degree like it was doing previously. But what this means is, the temperature of the actual, uh, you know, the wort or your fermented temperature will increase much faster. So you're gonna be hitting those target numbers a lot quicker like this, and that uh, temperature will increase a lot quicker like that. And as soon as, you know, the, the core temperature of the fermenter hits 24, you know, the air temperature will then back off and say, hey, no need to be going right out to five degrees above the set point. We can narrow it down and now just, you know, cycle the, uh, the heating or cooling device on, um, you know, as it would normally just to maintain that, you know, 24 degrees Celsius, uh, you know, that we're trying to achieve. So really the benefits of this is hitting the desired temperature faster, more accurate temp control. So being able to hit those target numbers bang on. And the other thing is we can reduce our overall temperature hysteresis in this type of instance because we've got a much larger thermal mass. So because we're taking that temperature reading of the core of, you know, you know in this case, there was a 30 liter all rounder in there. Um, you know, we basically, you know, can reduce that temperature hysteresis to even 0.1 degrees Celsius. And the other kind of benefit is there'll be less compressor turning on and off in this type of scenario. Um, you know, because we've got a much larger thermal mass, kind of buffering essentially that, uh, that, 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 that change in temperature. Unlike the air temperature inside the chamber cavity, which will cycle, you know, which will change very easily and swing up and down, uh, you know, much more. Um, you know, this will basically buffer that temperature and elongate the compressor life because we're not cycling the compressor on and off so much. Well, that's pretty much it on how to bond the pill with one of our other wrap devices. I should also say we have these other separate wrapped um, temperature probes as well. So these are another really cool uh, device and you can bond these with things like the temperature controllers and the fridges. Or more importantly, these can actually be bonded with the new Brewzilla Generation 4 breweries as well. And I'm going to show you some really cool features there. Anyway, look, hope you enjoy um, you know, all this cool new wireless stuff that's coming out. We're certainly working really hard to uh, make it a seamless experience with lots of uh, features in here. So if you want anything else, or you want us to bring out a new type of uh, you know, wireless probe that you can sort of integrate into the whole wrap system, please comment below. Uh, we definitely listen to a lot of our customers and a lot of this cool new stuff, it's honestly, it's, it's, we often make it because of customer requests from people like yourself. So subscribe now to the YouTube channel, bottom right hand corner, that really helps us too. And the other thing you can do is join our Facebook homebrew community group. So uh, yeah, jump on Facebook, search Kegland homebrew community group and subscribe to that one too. All right, that's it for today and I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.